Rev up your engines! It turns out that over 3,100 Kias and Hyundais, basically it's the same company, they own each other now, have had fires that were non-collision related. I mean, if a car gets in a wreck and goes on fire, you can't blame the car, but these are cars that just start on fire. Now, if you remember a while back, 2.3 million cars for engine problems. It's still happening. They obviously have not fixed the problem. I've seen with my own personal customers, a couple of them had theirs recalled. They took it in to get the engines fixed. The engines broke down a month or two later, and one of them still in the process of suing them. You said you fixed my engine, now it's broken, and they're saying, oh, that's something else. That wasn't what we fixed. A lot of nonsense going on with some of these companies. Now, I find this amusing myself because J.D. Powers keeps giving these high ratings for Kias and Hyundais. I mean, come on now. It's an advertising company. They're just being paid to say they're making good cars. Anybody who knows anything about the real world realize that stuff is nonsense anyway. Listen to what an advertising company has to say about the quality of cars. They're obviously having problems. I tell people not to buy them for that reasons. I'm not a fan. I mean, they seem to be making them better than they did before, but with these problems, hey, I personally wouldn't buy one. Uh, the quality's just not there, and I personally would stay away from them. I would not buy one. I don't advise my customers to buy Kias and Hyundais, and something like this, that 2.3 million of them were recalled, and some of these are still going on fire after they fixed the cars? I'd stay far away from that company. Jabari says, question. Is a Lexus 2.0 turbo, 250 brake horsepower, or reliable as a Lexus 2.5 V6 with 200 brake horsepower? No, no turbocharged car is more reliable than a non-turbocharged car, and you're mixing a four-cylinder turbo that's going to spin a lot faster than a V6 non-turbo that doesn't have to spin as fast to get going. They're good engines, there's no arguing that, but any engine that's turbocharged is not going to last as long as a non-turbocharged engine. It's just the turbochargers ram more air into the engine. It's the same as increasing the compression faster, it's going to wear out. Anything that has more pressure is going to wear out of something that has less pressure. It's just common sense. They're still good vehicles, you got nothing against them, but they won't last as long. Justin Gomez says, what's the best reliable auction for a first-time buyer? Well, you know, it really depends on what you want to spend, but if you want the most reliable bank for your buck, look around for an old Toyota Corolla. They can run forever, and I mean, you can buy them that have 230,000 miles on them. They still have a reasonable amount of life left in them. That's probably the best thing you could possibly buy for the bank for their buck, as long as you road test it before you buy it and find out that, hey, it runs good and it shifts good. Hey, it can still have quite a bit of life, and that's the most bang you're going to get out of your buck. Bubble Buddy says, what do you think of the Honda CRV? It's a great line of vehicles. I've had customers with them for the last, I don't know, 30-something years, I guess they've been making them almost that long, and they were all pretty happy with the vehicles. The only thing that people really whined about was the last decade and a half or so, they made crappy air conditioning compressors, and they made the shaft on the compressor clutch thin, and it'd snap off and fly off, and you had to get a new compressor. But Honda actually gave a lot of people free new compressors for that, because they know they screwed up. Those things can run a long time. They're solid built vehicles. And for a Honda, they usually have a decent automatic transmission. That's the weakest thing in Honda. But my customers with the CRVs, none of them had any automatic transmission problems with them, and some of them drove them pretty hard. Munther says, Scotty, I got a 2013 Ford Fusion. The transmission failed at 38,000 miles. The dealer rebuilt it. Should I get rid of it? Well, here's the thing. They got to give you some kind of a warranty on that. You got a seven-year-old Ford Fusion. Their resale value isn't that much. And, you know, if you only had 38,000 miles on it now, you might as well continue to drive it, because if you are curious, see what you get in trade-in value on another vehicle, like a Toyota Camry, and you're going to find they're probably going to give you practically nothing for it. So you might as well just drive it until the wheel falls off, rather than sell it and lose a bunch now. I mean, you're yeah, have it, so why not? That's why I always tell people with any car that's kind of uh, in between mileage and age, and it's worth that much, and if it still runs good, eh, why get rid of it now? E. Donnelly says, question, my 05 Corolla temperature gauge drops in the middle when I turn the heat on. What could it be? When you turn your heat on, the heater is a small radiator that's inside your dash to give you heat in the winter. In front of the engine is the big radiator. 
but the big radiator is the same as the heater core inside it's just a lot bigger so when you take that extra heat out of the car it'll make your temperature go down generally now if your car is running too warm unless you put that heater on then you got an overheating problem it can be a billion things it can be your cooling fans aren't working it can be your low on coolant it could be your water pumps leaking it could be that your radiator is old and won't dissipate heat anymore that is tricky I've got a video how to fix an overheating car engine watch that and it shows you every possibility that could possibly make your car overheat so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell